What's going on, guys? Ladies and gents, how are you guys doing? This is your boy Dentari's Lock coming at you guys with another video. I know it's been a little minute. A lot of things been going been going on, but you know how this pandemic thing is going on. But we're gonna get through it. But let's get to it. A lot of different things have happened with my bucks since I've been on. A lot of different things. Um, but before I get to that, I want to let you guys know that I do have a podcast that I am working on right now. It's called NBA Fast Break. Um, we usually are on Sunday, 8 to 9. Uh, we're talking about the NBA right now, and then we're working on doing an NFL podcast as well. But with things going how they are, we just have to maneuver and use what we have. So, but back to the main topic that I want to get on in this video. So I want to talk about just the offseason um, that my Bucks have had. There's a lot of things that have happened that some good and some bad. Um, as you see, we have a lot more fans than we've ever had um, since some of the transactions that we have made. A lot of people are hopping on the bandwagon already. Um, so, And expectations are up here now. So... Uh, but let's get to it. Uh, so, obviously, the biggest the biggest sign that we know was signing Tom Brady. Um, signed Tom Brady to a pretty decent de deal. Got two years worth about $50 million, which wasn't a bad idea. Um, my thing behind this, how I first felt about it is, okay, you know, I love my team. But I think a lot of times how the front office think unbiased more than just – team and act you know just well i'm a fan mindset that's not how i think i think more so of how why are we why are we not playing good what's the reasoning you have this player why not build around him to make him better um i personally was hurt the fact that we let winston go that's just me um not because he went to fsu and won him a title as well as when i was there but it was more so the fact that when you draft a player you build around him um and i felt like for him to be in Tampa as long as he was, to have as many coaches, as, as many different offensive coordinators, it didn't give him the right chance and the right opportunity or the fair opportunity to play his case. Um, with all these different offensive coordinators, you know, different coaches, I mean, how can you expect somebody to be very consistent when they're learning something new all the time? So for me, it was a heartbreaking thing just to be in the fact that they kind of told, like, pushed him away. Um, he's done so much for the organization with what he had. Um, people don't realize the fact that we didn't really have a running game most of the time that he was here. And the only time that we had a serious running game is when he went to the Pro Bowl with Doug Martin having over 1,100 yards. So the the way that Jason Light and Bruce Aarons went about it, I didn't really like. But I'm a, I'm a diehard fan regardless. So I'm going to flow with what my team does. Um, and that's it's always been like that. So, still hurting, and the fact is, what makes it worse is the fact that he went to New Orleans. So, hopefully, we don't see him while he's there, but there's a possibility that we may. But, uh, but again, if you're going to let somebody with that caliber go to a different team, you got to replace him with somebody that's going to be as good or a hell of a lot better. And grabbing Tom Brady was um, the move that they had to make letting Winston go. Um, obviously, they signed Tom Brady. And then, you know, Winston decided to go somewhere else. It seems as if Jason Light and Bruce Aarons were banking on signing Tom Brady, which is what they did. Um, now, the big piece that came with that was the fact that they got Gronk to come out of retirement. Or, shall I say, Brady got Gronk to come out of retirement. Um, that's a huge piece, right? Um, many people are saying, well, he was, he was retired last year. We don't know what to expect from him. But... The player of his caliber and what he can do, he forces defenses and defensive coordinators to give him attention. So every time he's on the field, you're going to have to show him some kind of attention. Therefore, leaves Mike, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, O.J. Howard, all these other pieces possibly open. Um, there's a lot of other pieces like Scott and Miller, Justin Watson that we may see in the fold as well that may get some more run and show a big difference on this team. Now that you have so many offensive weapons. Um, now, this offensive line has to play better. 
they have to play a hell of a lot better. Um, how we did last year was terrible. I mean, James got sacked over 40 times, 45 times last year. So even with with Tom Brady, you can't say that Tom Brady is going to change how many times he gets sacked because he's Tom Brady. Um, a lot of times he's going to change the plays and, and, and approach it a little different. But at the same time, the offensive line just needs to play better around how Tom Brady loves to play. Uh, and that leads me to that next point of some of the people that we drafted. Um, now, it was very crucial, the fact that we grabbed the pieces that we did, being the fact that they are going to make a huge, they're going to make a huge impact on this team. Um, now, every time you make a draft, like I said earlier, I feel as if when you draft someone, first round, they're expected to start and be make a huge impact on your team. Both. And if you hit it right, hit the nail on the coffin, you're talking about a Hall of Famer, right? In the draft a couple of times. There's a lot of a lot of people that get drafted later that are Hall of Famers, but if you draft correctly, as we've seen a lot of teams do, they draft somebody in the first round, they're a Hall of Famer, and they make a huge impact on the team. Um, so with that being said, the draft wasn't too bad for us. Um, I ain't going to lie. For me, I was panicking uh, because, for one, we traded up to pick a person that was going to fall in our lap. Jared Willis is a hell of a, a hell of an offensive lineman, a hell of an offensive tackle. I was not expecting him to go right there, to be honest. I was expecting us to go somewhere else. I'm sorry, not Jared Willis, Tristan Wolf. I was expecting him to go somewhere else in the draft. Top five, I believe. I was expecting him to go to maybe New York or somebody like that. But he's falling. And when he's falling, I'm like, okay, he's falling towards us. Um, we're going to get an offensive line, an offensive tackle. And all of a sudden, the 49ers are right in front of us. And I'm like, okay, they don't really need an offensive lineman. So we're going to get either him or it was somebody else that was available after him anyway. Um, so that we're, we were projected to get. But we move up one slot to get this player. To me, it didn't make any sense. I need, I still need an explanation for that because to me, it seemed like John Lynch and the 49ers won that trade. They weren't going to draft the offensive lineman right there at all. They went back and traded for Trent Williams later. So for me, this is one of those times where I feel like Jason Light made a move that he panicked. We've seen him do it multiple times. He panicked and got OJ Howard. OJ Howard. And pan at the time, and he panicked and traded back, I believe, to get Vernon. He traded up the second round to get a kicker who was not on our team anymore. So when it comes to the draft, I really feel like Jason Light panics a lot. That's just my decision. That's just what I believe. And it continues to prove that. This dude is going to be there in one more spot. And if he's not there, you have another office alignment from Louisville and the, the Georgia Offensive tackle, offensive tackle there as well. So why trade up one spot? So, but I'm happy with with the pick though. I mean, it was a great pick. I mean, he's gonna make a huge impact for our team. Tristan Wirfs is gonna be a hell of a hell of an offensive lineman. He should be a Hall of Famer. Um, you y'all seen that video? Of him jumping out of water, out of the pool, straight like straight up. So. This guy's going to be a hell of a player. I think he's going to protect the backside. He's going to help Donovan Smith, who needs to help to protect Tom Brady. Another pick that we made that was huge was Antoine Whitfield Jr. We all know, you know his dad who played for the Vikings for so long and was a hell of a corner. This safety is going to be huge. I mean, we do have... Now we're kind of deep at the safety position. Position. Um, we don't know when Justin Evans is going to come back. Um, we do have Mike Edward, Mike Edwards in the fold, so we have a couple guys back there that going to make an impact. But with getting him as early as we did in the second round, um, I think this is a huge pickup as well. Uh, they're talking about wanting us to make a move with Jamal Adams. I don't think that we need to make that move now because we have a young uh db crew that can get things done so 
Antoine Whitfield Jr., I think he's going to be very solid. I think he starts um, week one against the Saints. And I expect him to make a huge impact. I mean, he's, like I said, he, he did a lot when he was at Minnesota. He did a lot of things. And I can see him doing a lot moving forward. Now, I got to skip past his next pick just because I'm still at University of Minnesota with Antoine Whitfield. We got a stud receiver in the fifth round in Tyler Johnson. I don't think people understand the steal that we got in the, first, the fifth round. But the thing about getting him is we have so many rep weapons already. This is a this is a this is a, this is a pick that kind of worries me because he's such of a he's such of a great player. Now you have Evans, Godwin, OJ Howard, Cameron Bray, Gronk, Tyler Johnson, Scotty Miller. Justin Watson. That's nine pieces right there. And there's other pieces that I still have to name on that can make an impact. The thing is, if he pans out and plays how he did in college, there's a there's a possibility that somebody may be leaving Tampa. And not this year, but within the next couple of years. Um, because we have so many weapons, it, it's going to be kind of tough to bring back all of them and keep them under and make sure they all have a have a good contract that they're going to be pleased with. So, but like I said, there's no such thing as enough weapons for Tom Brady, and we know that. Um, so, honestly, tell you guys early, I wouldn't expect Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Tyler Johnson, or anybody to lead the league in catches or receiving yards because with all these pieces, Tom Brady likes to spread the ball around. And he usually likes to, watching a lot of what he does, he likes to audible to running plays. So, it's great to have a lot of pieces. We have a lot of for sure hands on this team. Great route runners, uh, for sure hands. Um, you, can't, you can't go one-on-one -on -one with any of these weapons, which is going to be very scary. Uh, Gronk, like I said, is going to be that piece that you have to pay attention to. But also, you have to pay attention to God. We got to pay attention to Evans. So we might see Tyler Johnson and Scotty Miller and a couple other pieces that may get, you know, a little bit more attention than these other guys because of the attention that they're grabbing from the defensive players. Now, another position that we need to fix, speaking of the running game, is we needed another running back. Listen, I'm sorry. For me, I wasn't a fan of Peyton Barber. That's just me. Um, pretty solid dude. He's a great backup. Simple. But for what we were trying to do last year, the year before, um, he didn't succeed those expectations. Um, I expect more Ronald Jones this year. But the thing about this is Bruce Arians doesn't like to run the ball. So this is where him and Tom Brady are going to come on the same page. Tom Brady has won numerous championships. Bruce Aarons has not. So, at some point, Bruce Aarons is going to have to tweak that offense around Tom Brady. And one thing I think that he's shown that he's doing it is drafting this running back, Kashawn Vaughn, out of Vanderbilt, is you need a numerous amount of running backs to give Tom Brady the chance to, hey, I don't like this play against his defense. I'm just gonna hand it. I'm gonna hand it to the running back for two or three yards, even more. Come on now, like okay, Sony Michelle last year, James White, Rex Burkhead. They had so many receivers on their team usually that one of their running backs don't dress that could easily start on any other team. So we need to have that same build around Tom Brady for these next two years. Now. Picking up Kashawn was very huge. The only thing that pissed me off about that is the fact that they had an option to grab Leonard Fournette as well. Now, this goes back to that first trade. If you wait to get Tristan Wirfs, Wirfs you, can, you can use that trade that you traded, that pick that you traded to the 49ers, which I believe was a second or a third round. I, think, I believe it was a third round. To the 49ers to move up, you could have used that to get Kashawn Vaughn and used that third pick the trade to Leonard Fournette, to the Jags with Leonard Fournette. Now you have three running backs. But one decision in the first round 
cost you an extra running back. So, you know, like I said, this is a great move, but one extra player doesn't hurt. By being, and, but instead of being greedy at the first round, it cost us that extra player. That just went over 1,000 yards last year in Leonard Fournette. So, come on now, the Jags are giving him away for a third round? Who wouldn't take that? So, but um, I think that Kashawn Vaughn will compliment Ronald Jones very well. I think he's going to be that player that's going to make a big difference. Um, I will have to see him play a little bit more and see what to expect from him moving forward. But I do like the fact that now we have another running back that can compliment Ronald Jones. As far as with, I, I can't even say his, his last name, Adebule. Um, Also, I have to go over Khalil Davis. Dude ran a 4-7. That's all I got to say. You're 6-1 and you're 308 and you run a 4-7. Come on, man. That's like a 10-4, 10-5, and 100. So this guy, <laughs> you can't scramble around him if we can get him in rotation. You cannot scramble around him. That's, that's not happening. He is one of the players that we grab for a player like Christian McCaffrey who can get out the hole and try to, excuse me, try to speed up and get – to the five yard line or five or ten yards down the field, Khalil Davis is not gonna let that happen. One missed tackle by somebody else is not gonna hurt as bad with Khalil Davis on the field. So that was a great pick. I mean, we did get him in the sixth round, so the expectations for him is not as high as the top, you know, three or four players we got before that. But I do believe with the help of Ndamukong Sue, William Goldston, um, a lot of other people that we have, Vita Vea. I think that he's going to play a huge part. Also, that gives the rest for, you know, the Sue, who's a little bit older, um, and the William Ghost, and we could put him in rotation as well. So I think that's a huge pickup as well for me. Um, and, 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 it's, and having depth at that position is very huge, very huge. So, like I said, this, this offseason – this offseason is mind-blowing. I mean, right now, I'm pretty sure a lot of you Buck fans see that we're getting all the attention. Everything that Tom, Tom Brady goes to the bathroom and the Bucks are talking about it or, or the news is talking about it. The NFL is talking about it. So everything that happened, we're getting attention. We haven't gotten this so much attention since Ronnie Barber picked off Donovan McNabb, since we won the Super Bowl, since Derrick Brooks took that pick back against Rich Gannon. Since Dwight Smith took the pick six back, since Dexter Jackson won the MVP of the Super Bowl. So this is something that is going to make a huge difference. And we got the old school uniforms back. Like, how can you not be mad about that? So, again, guys, this is going to be an interesting um, season moving forward. I'm about building now and moving on to the, for the future. I'm hoping... That And we will see moving forward what Bruce Arians and Jason Light has in store to when Tom Brady is gone. Because right now our backup is Blaine Gabbert. And I'm not too much of a fan of him coming in after Tom Brady. So, guys, this is going to be a long season ahead. I will be back on more videos. Um, I will be talking about different things outside of Bucks. I will be touching on a lot of different things, being the fact that we do have this pandemic. Um, so it's going to be a very, very interesting season guys. Make sure y'all subscribe and like my videos. Um, I definitely appreciate it. Give your comments, drop comments, ask questions. I'm going to definitely be on it, man. I'll definitely be here. I mean, like I said, this is going to be an exciting season. And then on top of that, the Super Bowl is in Tampa. I will be there. The Bucks go to the Super Bowl. I will be there regardless. There's already a couple games that I plan to be at. And Tampa, um, got to be against, got to be in Kansas uh, against Kansas City. Got to be there. Minnesota, I've already got. That's around my birthday time. December thirteenth is when that game is. Definitely got to be there. So there's other games that um, I plan to be at. But out of all of them, if we do make that move, making the Super Bowl, I will be there. But again, guys, like I said, make sure you guys check out my videos. I will be here. Black Dash eight one three is me on Instagram and Twitter. Black, the word dash, numbers 813. Check it out, and I'll be on more videos, man. Go Bucks.